Ube is ordering modulo permutation equations by Christopher Lynch and Doham Kim. We will use a pre recorded video uh, where the talk is given by Doham. So I think Alejandro has the power to start the video. Hello, my name is Doan Kim. I'm going to talk about an RPO based ordering modular permutation equations and its applications to relay systems. This is a joint work with Christopher Lynch. Here are the contents introduction, permutation equations, and permutation groups. Permutation equations are associated with the permutation groups. The main topic is on RPO-based ordering modulo permutation equations. I'm going to also talk about ground completion modulo and then conclusion. Recursive path ordering is one of the most well-known orderings for term rewriting and equational theorem proving. And RPO was adapted for AC compatible orderings. And the AC compatible orderings have been well researched in the literature. RPO with a status. The basic idea of RPO with a status is to compare two terms by comparing their top symbols first, then compare the collection of their immediate subterms recursively. If the top symbols are the same, and is in the lexicographic status. The collections are seen as ordered tuples. If the top symbols are the same and is in the multiset status, the collections are seen as unordered multiset. So this is the RPO with the status. So given a finite, given a total precedence on a finite set of function symbols F, and RPO with a status is defined like this. So if X is a variable occurring in S and S is not equal to X, then S is greater than X or else. So there are four cases. The first case says that some, sub, some argument of F is greater or equal to T, then S is greater than T. If F is greater than G with respect to the precedence, and S is greater than all the arguments of G, then S is greater than T. If F and G are the same and is in the lexicographic status, then the arguments are compared lexicographically. And if F and G are the same and is in the multiset status, the arguments are compared using unordered multiset. So this notation denotes the set, this set. And here, this one is the lexicographic extension of this RPO ordering. So this ordering is well defined because the pair of terms applied to this ordering is smaller than the pair of terms S and T. Permutation equation is an equation of the form for some permutation law on N here. So commutativity is the simplest case of permutation equations. So for each permutation equation, we can derive the permutation corresponding to this permutation equation. And if E is a set of permutation equations with the same top function symbol, then we can derive the set of permutations derived from E. And the permutation group can be generated by this set of permutations. So basically, we may derive the permutation group from E if E is a set of permutation equations with the same top function symbol. And this is the known result. And uh, this result applies to the uniform leap permutative equations, but this can also be applicable for a set of permutation equations with the same top function symbol. So if E is a set of permutation equations and small e is a permutation equation, and every equation in this set has the same top function symbol, 
then small e is true in E. We plan only if the permutation derived from small e is an element of the permutation group derived from E. So the equational consequence problem is reduced, can be reduced to the permutation group membership problem. So if E, if e is a finite set of permutation equations, but E can have a several different permutation function symbols. In this case, we can decompose. So for each sub E, I, e sub I, this set shares the same top function symbols. And if EJ and EK with uh, J not equal to K, then this, these sets are disjoint. And the uh, equation in these sets uh, do not have the same top function symbol. So we can decompose a finite set of permutation equations based on the permutation function symbols. We denote by EQ of F the equational theory with the terms headed by a function symbol F in E. And Fe is the set of the all function symbols occurring in E. E compatible ordering is essential for many applications of rewriting modulo E and equational theorem proving modulo E. And this is defined. An ordering on terms is E compatible if S is greater than T and S is E equivalent to S prime and T is E equivalent to T prime implies S prime is greater than T prime for all S S prime and T and T prime. And we can describe a permutation using the cycle rotation concisely. So this permutation says that one maps to two and two maps to three and three maps to four and four maps to one. And using the cycle rotation, one maps to two and two maps to three and three maps to four and four maps to one. So it is well known in group theory that every permutation on a finite set can be a product of disjoint cycles. Also, the symmetric group SN on N letters can be generated by two cycles, one, two, and one, two, two, N. So the symmetric group SN on N letters have the cardinality N factorial but its generating set can have only two elements, these two cycles. So if E is a given like this one, we can derive the permutations from E. The first permutation is the one maps to two and two maps to one. So three, four remain the same. So this permutation equation correspond to one, two. And for this one, one maps to two, two maps to three, three maps to four, and four maps to one. So this corresponds to the cycle one, two, three, four. And one, two, and one, two, three, four, two cycles generate the symmetric group S4. So any permutation of variables is allowed while preserving the E equivalency. Group action. So this is the definition of group actions. And we are particularly concerned with the permutation group actions. For the permutation group action, uh, each element of the permutation group act as a permutation on the set. So this one, I can be thought of as a permutation, identity permutation for the permutation group action. And this uh, is the associative T property. So when such an action is given, we say that G acts on the set. So if X is a G set, there is a relation. And this relation is defined if there exists some G such that GXI equals XJ. And this relation is an equivalence relation. We can see that, that it is reflexive because we uh, can think of a, G as an identity element and xi tilde xi. So this is also the symmetric relation because uh, we can associate with the uh, G inverse for the actions. And uh, this is also transitive. So this is an equivalence relation on X and the equivalence classes on X determined by this equivalence relation are the orbits of G on X. G 
given T with the uh, F is a uh, commutation function symbols. And this commutation group is derived from the set of permutation equations with the permutation function symbol F and act on the set in the usual way. So we denote each orbit of this permutation group on X uh, by this one. So the each orbit of this permutation group is basically a subset of X and a subset of X correspond to the argument position of a permutation function symbol F, the set of arguments, some, sub, some set of argument position of permutation function symbol F. And we can derive the multi set from these argument positions. So here, this can be a multi set. So we first act on the set first, then we obtain the corresponding multi set. For example, the associated permutation group is S4. And this symmetric group S4, uh, we have a single orbit. And the multi set derived from this uh, single orbit uh, just simply is a D, C, B, G of A. So our incompatible reduction ordering is defined as follows. And it is uh, adapted from the IPO with the status. Given a finite set of permutation equations and a total precedence on a finite set of function symbols, uh, our ordering is defined like this one. So if X is a variable occurring in S and S is not equal to X, then S is greater than X. And if the sum argument of F is greater than T, greater or equal to T, then S is greater than S is greater than T. And F is greater than G with respect to precedence, and S is greater than all the argument of G, then S is greater than T. F equals G and is in the lexicographic status, then we can compare the arguments are compared lexicographically. And this is also needed. S is greater than Ti for the arguments of G. And F equals G, and it is in the, it is, if, if, if it is a permutation function symbols, then we can obtain the multi set corresponding to the orbit. And then is multi set compared in the lexicographic way. So here, the set lex and the set of permutation function symbols are disjoint, and they, they are together combined is a set of all function symbols. So this is an example. The permutation derived from E, the first permutation derived from the first permutation equation is a cycle one, two, because one maps to two and two maps to one, and three, four remain the same. And the second permutation derived from the second permutation equation is a cycle three, four, because three maps to four, and four maps to three, and x1, x2 remain the same. So there are two orbits. The first orbit corresponds to the argument position of F, the first argument position of F, and the second argument position of F. And the second orbit corresponds to the third argument and the fourth argument position of F. So the associated multi set for S is uh, the, the first multi set obtained from the first orbit is a, for S is a XA. And uh, the multi set obtained from the first orbit for T is a AX and they are equivalent with respect to the multi set extension. And the multi set obtained from the second orbit for S is a CA and the multi set obtained from the second orbit for T is a BC. 
and CA is greater than BC, and the remaining conditions can be easily checked. So we have uh, S is greater than T by K score. The next example, we have a uh, two permutation function symbol, F and G. So we first decompose E1 and E2. E1 consists of permutation equation with the permutation function symbol F. And E2 is a permutation equation with a permutation function symbol G. Now we compare S and T. So as you can see, there is a single orbit for the permutation function symbol F. And the multiset obtained from the orbit is a C, G of P, A, and A for S. And uh, the multiset obtained from the orbit for T is a G of A, B, and B, and C. And this can be, C are the same. So these two should be compared. And we have this uh, G of B, A, and A is greater than G of A, B, and B because uh, the first orbit, we have uh, two orbits for this uh, permutation function symbol G. And the first orbit corresponds to the, the set of argument positions, one and two. And the second orbit corresponds to the set of argument positions three because one is mapped to two and two is mapped to one and three remains the same. So the corresponding multiset for the first orbit is uh, B A for G O B A and A. And uh, the corresponding multiset for the first orbit for term G of A, B, and B is A, B. So they are equivalent with respect to the multiset extension. And the multiset corresponding to the second orbit for this one is A. And the multiset corresponding to the second orbit for this one is a B. And the remaining case, cases, conditions can also be easily checked. And we have S is greater than T by case four. Some properties of our incompatible orderings, and it is uh, incompatible simplification orderings having the subterm property, and it is a total on ground terms, and it provides a simple termination criterion for RE rewrite systems. And given a big set of permutation equations, a total precedence on a finite set of function symbols and two terms ST, we can determine as whether S is greater than T in polynomial time. So the computation of orbits can be done in polynomial time because uh, we can derive the generating set for the permutation group derived from permutation equations. And uh, using this generating set, computation of orbits can be done in polynomial time. And we can also use a bottom-up approach using two-dimensional array and the strict subterm of S and strict subterm of T are first compared. And using this bottom-up approach, we can determine whether S is greater than T in polynomial time. Ground completion modular permutation equations. If P is greater than Q, then the, P, the rule P goes to R is added to R. And if P is uh, rewritten to P prime, can be rewritten to P prime, then this can be simplified. P is uh, simplified and to P prime. And delete is uh, if P is uh, e equivalent to Q, then this equation can be deleted from P. And compose, if R is, uh, can be rewritten to R prime, then it's uh, rewritten to R prime. Collapse is that if if the rule here, L can be rewritten to L prime using some rule GD, then this L prime equals R is, uh, can be added to the P. And if L is equivalent to G, then R is uh, greater than T because uh, this ensures that the, uh, the rule L goes to R is uh, larger than the rule G goes to D because uh, we want the uh, bigger rewrite rule 
can be simplified that the smaller derivable. And this one indicates that the P prime R prime can be obtained from PR using an inference rules. A derivation is a sequence of states, and a derivation is bare if any transition rule that is continuously enabled is applied eventually. The set of persisting rules at infinity is finite for a bare derivation, and this bare derivation terminates. And at infinity E is ground convergent modulo E. And P0 is the initial set of ground equations. And this is uh, P0 is the initial set of ground equations. But R0 is empty because the initial set of ground derivatives is empty. But R infinity E is ground convergent modulo E. So this is the uh, uh, example. Another example, so we can derive the permutations from this set of permutation equations. We derive the cycle one, two from the first permutation equation, one, two, three, four for the second permutation equation, and five, six for the third permutation equation. As you can see, five maps to six and six maps to five, and all the variables remain the same. And five, six, seven, eight for the fourth Computation equation. So one, two, cycle one, two, and one, two, three, four generate the symmetric group S4. And the cycle five, six, five, six, seven, eight generate the symmetric group isomorphic to symmetric group S4. So this set of permutations generate the symmetric group isomorphic to the direct product of S4 and S4. So this using this uh, set of permutation equations, we can partition the set of argument partitions of F. So the first partition is the, the partition, partitions of one, two, three, four. And the second partition corresponds to the partitions of X5, X6, F7, and eight. So any permutation of the first variable, first permutation, any permutation of variables is allowed for the first, first partition while preserving the E equivalence, see? And uh, any permutation of variables is allowed for the second partition while preserving the E equivalency. So if P is uh, consists of this equation, then we can orient these rules because uh, this the first term is larger than the second one by case two. Here we have a two partitions. So the first partitions, there are three B and one R. And the second partition, there are three B and one R. So here we have a three B and one R for the first partitions and the three B and one R. So there is an E matching. So the inside the partition, the order does not matter. So we can have a E matching here. And this term can be rewritten to this term. For the second one, there is no imaging because the, in the first partition, there are three B and one R, but there is there are four B here. So there is no imaging, and this is an R normal form. So occasional reasoning involving this kind of partitions using permutation function symbols have not been well researched. And although the rewriting modulo AC has been well researched, but uh, in this one, like uh, rewriting with the built-in permutation permutations, has not been well researched. And this is the conclusion. So the we established the incompatible ordering for a finite permutation equation series permutation theories E. And our essential idea is to use group action and orbit to establish incompatible ordering. And it provides a simple termination criteria for RE rewrite systems. If L is uh, larger than R for all rules L goes to R, then RE is terminating. And given a big set of permutation equations and two terms S and T, we can determine whether S is greater than T in polynomial time. 
And completion module E can be easily adapted from the existing literature. And we also provide inference rules for the ground completion module E. And the potential applications for our approaches can be used for the hardware and software verifications. And our ordering can also be used for the rewriting modulo E mm -hmm. and equational theorem proving modulo E. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dohan, for this nice presentation. So if you have questions, please post in the chat or raise your hand as already done by two persons. So Deepak has a question. Thank you, Dohan, for very nice talk. Uh, I especially like the idea of uh, using orbits <clears throat> uh, for dealing with permutative uh, axioms. So my question is, uh, like, uh, let's say we have a special case of permutative axiom being associative and commutative, and uh, we also are dealing with ground equations. So what kind of ordering can be covered using this idea? For example, in the literature on Grobner basis, there are lots of orderings like lexicographic ordering, degree ordering, as well as orderings based on weights on symbols. So what kind of orderings can be, you know, can be covered by this particular idea? If you have yeah, this okay, uh, thank you for your question. And this ordering is covered by the, uh, basically IPO with the status with the built-in commutation function symbols. And the uh, associative commutativity is unfortunately is not covered by this approach because the uh, associativity is not a, a kind of a permutation function symbol in this case. So, okay. yeah, so it's, yeah, basically uh, this one does not, uh, ad, uh, cannot be adapted to the KBO because the, our approach is based on the IPO with the status. Okay. There is another question by Christoph in the chat. Could we imagine to generalize this ordering to theories E that are shallow, like E being X plus zero equals zero plus X? So not uh, if, if a shallow theories uh, satisfy the permutation function symbol, the axiom of the permutation function symbols, then it can be applied. But I don't think it's uh, not shallow, Every shallow series can be applied. For example, uh, like this one, x cross x equals x. This one is a shallow equation, but this is not a permutation equation. So we cannot use this uh, um, built-in E for our approach. But if it's a uh, shallow equation, satisfy the permutation function symbol uh, axioms, then it can be applied. Okay. Christoph asks, what about leaf permuting? permuting? Yeah, leaf permutative, this is a very interesting question and it is a very challenging question because uh, leaf permutative axioms are the generalization of the permutation function axioms, but it's more involved and we have to think a lot of things. And this, I think this is a kind of open, open problem. So as far as uh, I know, the ordering modulo, uh, incompatible ordering, simplification ordering modulo leaf commutative axioms are open. Okay. There seems to be no further pressing questions. So thanks again, Dohan, for this nice presentation.